Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese scholars observed the changing patterns in our natural world, the climate, the turning of the seasons, and astronomy. The scholars measured and divided the sun's annual movements into 24 equal parts, creating the 24 solar terms, which were used to govern agriculture in ancient China. Even to this day, this invention still guides the lives and traditions of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. Around the 8th of October, the 17th solar term, the cold chew arrives. The temperature has now cooled down noticeably and the weather is unpredictable. The Chongyang Festival is one of the traditional festivals for Chinese people to respect the old. People climb the hills and the mountains and pray for continued blessings. Lotuses of the summer have all withered. Fifteen days after the last solar term, the calendar has moved on to the 17th solar term, named Han Lu. It refers to the cold dew as it condenses and almost becomes frost. However, the colder the weather, the easier it is to build up an appetite. And in this autumn weather, as it starts to cool down, the Chinese have a solution, seeking out a special kind of delicious food. Uh. Shanghai's Chenghuan Temple is packed with people. People come from all over, drawn to Shanghai's local delicacies. These snacks are world famous. The Hanlu solar term is all about unmissable flavors. But if you're not around for these few days of feasting, you'll have to wait an entire year to get the chance along. There are simply too many people. The store was full a long time ago. Like everyone else who got out of bed at a more reasonable hour, I can only stand outside to taste this legendary dumpling. Soup-filled, finely wrapped dumplings have a long history in China. The dough wrappings are first lightly fermented and then wrapped with the fillings. In these steamed soup dumplings, flour, meat and soup become one, satisfying the belly and tickling the senses. Crab soup dumplings are the highest form of the art. The crab roe and meat are selected from the most expensive crabs in the market. Mixed with pork, fish and shrimp, and wrapped in a thin and strong flour wrappings. When steamed, they become crab soup dumplings with a rich soup and the delicate yet complex flavor of crab meat. The reason why crab soup dumplings are unique to this solar term is because their most important ingredient, crabs are at their plumpest and most succulent when the dew turns cold. Less than an hour's drive from Shanghai is the renowned freshwater Yangcheng Lake. For Chinese food lovers, this place is holy. The creatures that live in here are a cut above those found in any other lake. Hairy crabs are caught once a year during the cold dew solar term. It is a hugely famous annual event. Crab tasting is such a seasonal pastime that every year, when the cold dew solar term comes around, masses of people show up at the Ba Cheng town on the shores of the Yangcheng Lake to taste the great first catch of the year. In the Bacheng town, many people depend on the hairy crab for a living. 
Zhu Zhi and his father are crab breeders and run a crab farm resort. Be nice, young lady. Okay, the stomach is completely different. The stomach must be white. What are you eating? Fish. Fish. What else? Fish. 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 这个是我们的主人，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他告诉我，他
是吧？对，好多工具。那我们开始吧。嗯，就是剪刀，剪刀拿起来。对，把脚剪下来。第二步，现在我们把这个放在底托上，然后拿锤子轻轻的敲，把它就是壳敲松一点。这个叫蟹蝠，然后从这里塞进去。哇，也是。掰开。对。再把上面的鳃给去掉。嗯。为什么要用这么多工具呢？它每个角角落落，它,它都有肉啊嗯。嗯，不用工具的话、嗯、吃不干净。大户人家才会用那么多工具，有钱有闲。<笑>是，吃着螃蟹，嗯，听着昆曲，真的人生美事。Listening to the Kunchu songs while eating crab is one of the most refined customs of the Kolju Solar term, passed on to us by the ancient Chinese. I tend to think of it as if in my hometown in the UK, people would have afternoon tea and talk about Shakespeare. It's such a refined, high culture sort of pastime, but it seems the Chinese are even more particular, adding to the elegant custom a fairly unchangeable natural event. The shift from autumn to winter. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 顾卫英 is a professional kung fu master, and she's quite famous in China. Although she's been residing in Beijing for a long time now, she actually comes from Bacheng Town. And for the Cold Dew Solar term, every year she comes back to her hometown to perform. Actually, I was also thinking of such a thing. Seeing the stage that beautiful and the feeling of their clothes, I was so envious. I was thinking that one day I would be on that stage and I would be on that stage. I would be on that stage. 然后呢，我也穿着这些美丽的衣服，哎呦，我也在表演着，就是像做梦一样，就好喜欢那样的一种感觉。嗯The oldest surviving form of opera in China, Kunchu is known as the ancestor of all opera of China, as well as the world-famous Peking opera. They all came from Kunchu. Intense preparations are underway for the show. Gu Weiying has a leading role. The venue of this year's performance is Yushan Shengjing in the Bacheng town. Legend has it that this was one of Bacheng town's most coveted private gardens. 本来这儿可能是一片田吧。嗯嗯嗯，是，但是在元代的时候，一个儒商叫顾阿英。当时来说是非常有钱的一个商人，嗯，但是呢，他非常有文化，热爱诗词，嗯，他自己也写诗词，嗯，那他呢，在这儿建造了一个很大的一片的景，呃，集全国各地的，就是文化人，在这儿雅集。This is a typical Suzhou-style garden, buildings surrounded by a landscaped nature, made to look like a Chinese landscape painting, an idyllic naturescape within the bustling city. A thousand years ago, Chinese intellectuals would pass the day in such a place, spending the cold dew solar term with family and friends.
The singing will begin very soon. Pre-show preparations are very complicated. It takes nearly two hours to get ready, but finally Gu Weiying is about to come on stage.就这么简单就这么简单嗯来十年台下工台上一分钟昆曲是需要功夫的一伸手一迈步就知道你有多少人功力去<音> Gu will play Ming Dynasty's dramatist Tang Xian Zhu's Pony Pavilion. It's supposed to be a very beautiful love story, and it reminds me once again of Shakespeare's tragedies. Written far, far away, but in roughly the same literary period, the two dramatists even died in the same year. I have to say, Kun Chu is even harder to understand than Shakespeare's plays. The texts are written as people spoke a thousand years ago. The rhythm and melody is extremely slow. It's hard to understand how, in today's fast-paced society, it attracts such a big audience. Maybe when society develops to a certain stage, some people will want to go back to their roots to discover who they are and where they come from. Cold Yu may not be the most beautiful solar term in terms of nature, but it may well be one that is tied most closely to an overload of sensory experiences. And I was surprised to discover connections between China and the United Kingdom in terms of traditional culture. Whether derived by accident or coincidence, I think traditional culture is a common good, transcending the boundaries between nations and eras, able to outlive us all.